It has been 500 years since the Reformation has started. The thought in essential unity, in unessential diversity, and in all things, charity remains until today, even in the Seventh-day Adventist Church. My part today is to share to you what Ellen White has to say about unity in diversity. Today, I would like to explore how we would like to explore how she thinks. You know, Ellen White was part of, I think, one of the greatest part, if not the greatest part, in the unity of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Of course, the scriptures, the Holy Spirit, Acts. There, are, there have been a lot of doctrinal pluralism inside the, the church today, although it's not really pluralism. We have not arrived yet to, the, to unity. But uh, some issues like music, women ordination, 144,000 interpretation, the lifestyle, and mission approach eschatology brings a lot of scratches eh, even in our churches today as I go around. John chapter 10, Jesus was trying to say, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. And then Jesus tries to say, I am the door, so enter by me. The only way by which we can unite is to enter by Jesus Christ and not among ourselves. Because in Acts chapter 20, verse 30, in the last days, something is going to happen. Also of your own selves shall men arise. Among ourselves, men arise speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after themselves. If they're drawing away disciples for Jesus Christ, all will be well. But if, you know, shepherds will be drawing away disciples for themselves, this is the conflict, where the conflict arises. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 20, the professed Christian will not be accepted. Jesus Christ would say, I never knew you. Depart from me. It's a relationship that Jesus Christ requires. Though we may be in different places different denominations, or even in different persuasions. If, Christ, if we knew Christ, Christ would recognize us. If he knew us, he will recognize us. Of course, 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 3 says, Those who love God, he is known by him. Only those who love God truly and not themselves is known by Christ. The five foolish virgins were not accepted. I would not discuss about the lamp or the oil. They were not accepted because the premise was, I do not know you. It's more of a relationship that was not established. That's why they were rejected. Ellen White, Manuscript 51 said, There are true Christians in every church. And let me quote this very strongly, underline, not accepting the Roman Catholic communion. Does many Seventh-day Adventists accept this, that even in the Roman Catholic communion, there are true Christians and even in other Protestants? This is a question that I would like to give to you because Ellen White does not believe that only the Seventh-day Adventists are true, has true Christians. Of course, we believe in the invisible and the visible church. Now, let me give you some quotations from Steps to Christ 27, looking on the other paradigm, not only among Seventh-day Adventists or Christians or Protestants or Roman Catholic. What about the non-Catholics, the non-Christians? It is true that men sometimes become ashamed of their sinful ways and give up some of their evil habits, yes? Before they are conscious that they are being drawn to Christ, they don't even know that it is Christ that, drawn them, that is drawing them. But whenever they make an effort to reform from sincere desire to do right, it is the power of Christ, though they did not recognize Christ. It is the power of Christ that is drawing them. An influence of which they are unconscious works upon the soul, the conscience is quickened by the Holy Spirit through Christ, and the outward life is amended, though they may not recognize it, or they may not even know about our religion. John chapter 10, verse 16 says, um, The other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. And that does not only constitute, you know, us as Christians, it may even constitute the Gentiles. The Gentile now are those who are not Christians. Them also I must bring. This is the desire of Jesus Christ. And they will hear my voice 
They shall be one fold and one shepherd. Last night I was listening to testimonies from other countries, Buddhist, Hindu countries, and they're drawn to Christ. How? By the miraculous. And I know that the Lord is working through them as well. We must open our eyes. And I've been looking forward to the working of the Holy Spirit among us that we may recognize it. Testimonies for the church, volume 6. Ellen White said, Our ministers, and let me quote this, Our ministers should seek to come near to the ministers of other denomination. And many of our laymen would not accept this, but it is written in the spirit of prophecy. Pray for and with this man. Pray with this man. Ministers of other denomination. For whom Christ is interceding, a solemn responsibility is theirs. Solemn responsibility in other ministers of other denominations? Yes. As Christ's messengers, we should manifest a deep, earnest interest in these shepherds of the flock. Notice that Ellen White called them the shepherds of the flock, though they are not Seventh-day Adventist ministers. I, was, I entitled this the Adventist Ecumenical Movement. Meaning that the Adventist also has the responsibility to what? To gather together all of this. There is no person, no nation that is perfect in every habit and thought. One must learn of another. Could we learn from other denominations? Yes. Could they learn from us? Yes, they can learn from us. Therefore, God wants the different nationalities to mingle together to be one in judgment and in purpose then the union that there is in Christ will be exemplified. Jesus prayed for this union. Others resist it, but God will do what he wants regardless if we believe it or not. In Christ, this is, uh, I'm quoting from Roger Kuhn from Ellen White Encyclopedia. In Christ, every kind of social, intellectual, racial, national, and cultural differences becomes intrinsically advantageous. Our differences so sometimes we have to celebrate the differences that we have, even our different opinions. But let us not stick to just our opinions. Let's listen. Essential to spiritual growth and in diverse world, absolutely essential to the success, successful mission of the church. Our variety is essential for the success of the church. Some quotations that we think might be pluralistic in view. Let me give you a, one of her quotations. One man may be conversant with the scriptures and some particular portions of the scriptures is especially appreciated by him because he has seen it in a certain striking light. Another sees another portion as very important and thus one and another presents the very points of the people that appear the highest value. So they, they have different opinions, they have different ways of looking at one thing. But Ellen White said this is all in the order of God. When I heard about the opinions about the 144,000 in another way of the theologian, another theologian has another opinion. I said, why is this varying? But Ellen White says, this is or in the order of God. One man blunders in his interpretations of some portions of the scriptures, but shall this cause diversity and disunion? God forbid. We cannot then the take, take the position that the unity of the church consists in viewing every text of the scriptures in the very same shade of light. Seemingly, if we look at this as if Ellen White is willing to accept all. No, 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 no. Forbid. Let me give you another quotation. Just after this paragraph was given, Ellen White said, The great truths of the Word of God are so clearly stated that none need make a mistake in understanding them. So don't be so rushed. Even if they have differing opinions, God will do the unity later when we pray for unity. It's just that our heart is not willing, so that unity does not come. What about the synoptics? The synoptic gospel has different ways of looking at one thing, but in, the, in Ellen White's explanation, she said, our minds do not all run in the same channel, and we have not all been given the same work. So there's a benefit of looking at, at things in our own perspective because we feel it so that others could also relate to the same experiences that we have. Jeremiah was looking at it in a mournful way so that people who are mournful would what relate to how Jeremiah sees it. 
Christian experience, uh, page 201, if one takes his views of the Bible truth without regard to the opinion of his brethren and justifies his course, he's already what? Hardened, alleging that he has the right to his own peculiar views and then presses them upon others. How can he fulfill the prayer of Christ if he presses it? That's why there are a lot of denominations now because they continue to, to what? To just hold on to what they think is right and yet they are not willing to listen. And if another and still another arises, each asserting his right to believe and talk what he pleases without reference to the faith of the body, where will, where will be the harmony which existed between Christ and the Father and which Christ prayed might exist among his brethren? Why there are... Of, of all the denominations that have been gathered together in 1844, why have we come up all, all to this? Because there were almost about, what, 20 to 40 Sabbath conferences that happened that our leaders humbled themselves in looking up to the scriptures. They really humbled themselves before God. That's why they arrived to this point. Though we have an individual work and an individual responsibility before God, we are not to follow our own independent judgment, regardless of our opinions and feelings of our brethren, for this course would lead to disorder in the church. It is our duty of the ministers to respect the judgment of the brethren, but their relation to one another, as well as the doctrines they teach, should be brought to the test of the law and the testimony. For if there is they contradict to the law and the testimony, it is because there is no light in them. Then, if hearts are teachable, there will be no divisions among us. The reason for division is what? Discord, differences, is found in separation from Christ. Not wanting to enter the door. They wanted to enter the wide gate. They don't want to enter the narrow gate, which is Christ. Christ is a center to which all should be attracted for the nearer we approach the center, the closer we shall come together in feeling, in sympathy, in love, growing into character and image of Jesus. Self is our greatest enemy. Among the workers, the greatest enemy of, the, of, of unity is self. Among the workers, there is much of self that lives and refuses to die. Now this is self wants the supremacy. But if it is allowed to rule, the work will be marred, loses will will occur and there will be revealing of self in management and mistakes will be made. Not all who take hold of the work will be the same temperament. They will not be men of the same education or training. They will just surely work at cross purposes. They continue to work at cross purposes. They are different in character unless they are daily converted. <laughs> I was thinking about Martin Luther and Swingley, you know, Telling each other, you need to be converted. And the other, you need to be converted. None of them tell, uh, is, feels that they need conversion. They only think that the Laodicean message is only for the other and not for themselves. You know, sometimes when you have a sermon, you always tend to do this way or think, oh, I, how, how I wish this person was here during the sermon. We never ever think that the sermon was for us. That's the problem. This is the problem now. Autocracy. Auto means me. I rule. Versus democracy. The secret for unity is found in equality of believers in Christ. You have the same right as me. Let's talk together. Let's unite with each other. Let's see how we can find the truth together. This is the key to unity. Inclusive unity. I am instructed to say, and I, I like this, to, I'm instructed to say, Seventh-day Adventists the world over, he wants, she wants to say to the whole Seventh-day Adventists the world over, God has called us a people to be peculiar treasure unto himself. He has appointed that his church on earth, and I'm talking about the invisible church, his church on earth shall stand perfectly united in spirit and counsel of the Lord of hosts to the end of time. And I'm not only inclu including, uh, you know, excluding other Seven, uh, other Christians. I'm including other Christians. We can unite with them and in times of persecution they will be with us. Amen? They will be with us. To conclude, this is the last slide, I would say Ellen White promoted liberty of conscience, not 
autocracy. Not ruling other consciences, but, you know, giving the leeway to others. And she also promotes minor differences of opinion if it does not, you know, compromise the unity. But she did not condone doctrinal pluralism. She believes that the invisible church will be perfectly united in the future as Christ prayed. May the Lord bless you. Shall we all rise as we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you for Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, that uh, he is the perfect example. He humbled himself. He's willing to obey you. He's not willing to exalt himself. And when the Holy Spirit was sent, the Holy Spirit was not willing to witness for himself, but for Christ alone. And in the same way, we would like to be united as a church, we have different personalities, different temperaments, different ways of looking at one thing. But certainly when the Holy Spirit would come and be poured out among us, He will bring unity to each of us by humility of heart, by the love for each other, cherishing each other, and not stubbornly sticking at our own opinions. Help, Lord, this church and among all others, other ministers, of the flock from other denominations to come and uh, witness with us how the Holy Spirit would work in unity. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for what a joy it is to see the people of God in unity. Thank you, Lord, for preparing us for thy soon return. As we unite together, we know, Lord, that we shall be with you forever. In Christ's worthy name we pray. Amen.